Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm going to do a review today, which is not something I do regularly, but these pencils are very interesting. These are Faber-Castell Pit Graphite Matte pencils, and they are graphite pencils, but they're supposed to be matte, meaning that uh, there should be no graphite shine. So this is something that graphite pencil artists have always been waiting for. Uh, now these have been around for uh, half a year or so and I only just got them and I'm going to do a series of tests with them and a demonstration and let you know what I think about them. I've often talked about the properties of graphite pencils, their advantages and disadvantages and uh, how the graphite shine is one of the things that I was always bothered by. I, that's one of the reasons why I didn't really like using uh, graphite pencils. Uh, but this is what my set looks like. It's an 11 piece set and there are 8 pencils in it. The darkest one is 14B and these are pretty dark as you will see. Uh, so before I move on with the tests, I'm going to go right ahead and tell you what I think about them. I think these are excellent as you will see and I think they are everything I expected them to be. They perform wonderfully. You can do pretty much anything uh, you can do with graphite pencils except without the graphite shine. But now let's move on with the tests. Now uh, for comparison I'm going to use a regular set, a set of regular graphite pencils. This is a Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencil set. A slightly smaller set and these are excellent graphite pencils, make no mistake, these are great. But uh, like all regular graphite pencils these, do, these will have some graphite shine. So I'm going to compare these with these new matte graphite pencils and we'll see if there are any differences. Alright, so I'm going to start uh, with, uh, let's say, um, uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to work with them a little bit so that I can tell you how they feel and then, and then we're going to compare how they blend, how well they erase and some other things. So let's grab an 8B and an 8B is also uh, the darkest and the softest pencil in this range. And maybe I'm going to pick one of the harder ones, for example, uh, a 2B. And a 2B from here, if I have one, I do. So here it is. So here we have a 2B, uh, a 2B uh, matte graphite pencil and a 2B regular graphite pencil. And here are the 8Bs. All right. So that's all we're going to need for now. First, uh, let's try how they feel. I'm going to uh, start with this uh, matte, bit matte graphite pencil. And uh, right away, I think it feels uh, like a little bit harder pencil. So let me compare that with a regular 2B. Right away I can see a lot more graphite shine from the angle where I'm looking at it and I'm looking at, a, at it at a, like a 45 degree angle, actually maybe, maybe like a 60 degree angle. Uh, but uh, what I can tell you about how they feel, these feel, feel a little bit softer. These feel, feel a little bit harder. When you work with them, they actually feel a little bit more like colored pencils, but we'll see if uh, we'll see how they perform. So let me try these 8Bs. This one feels a little bit softer, but still it feels like a hard pencil. And the regular 8B, regular graphite pencil, uh, feels a little bit softer when you apply it. Now let's uh, try to compare the amount of graphite shine. I'm going to grab these two 8Bs because these are really soft and dark. So I'm going to press a little bit harder and I'm going to draw or I'm going to fill in this square 
with a mat 8B and one with a, with a regular 8B. So let's see how this will work. I'm pressing a little bit harder, making sure that I fill this in. And there's very little shine. There's very little shine from the angle that I'm looking at it at. And um, I don't know if you can pick up on it. We'll see it later. But let's try the regular AP. Already this one looks more grayish and more reflective to me. But now let's see what it looks like on camera. This one does look art lighter. Uh, let me try to use a bit more pressure but I don't think that's going to change anything. So there you see this one is darker mostly because it's less reflective. Now if I try to tilt it a bit you can see a huge difference between the two. That's just a huge difference, just a slight change in angle and you can see how much less reflective these are. But now Let's try blending a little bit, because if these don't blend, uh, we have a problem. So let's try blending with a couple of blending tools. Alright, so let's try with this, uh, with this blending stump. These are not that great for blending, usually I don't really like them that much when with graphite, but let's see. Okay, well it does move the material a little bit. You can blend. It does work. Obviously, this one works. This is the regular graphite pencil. Let me try with these. Uh, uh, with the, the, This was, what, what was this? This was a uh, 2B, I think. Pretty much the same result. But I think that uh, the regular graphite pencils are a little bit softer and they blend a little bit better. They blend a little bit better with a tutorial. Now let's try with a Q-tip. They blend very easily with a Q-tip. Let me try this one. Again, the regular graphite pencil blends even more easily than the pit matte. Uh, pencil. So, so far uh, I think that regular graphite pencils are a little bit easier to blend, but these do blend, so that's not a problem. Let me try the brush a little bit. Brushes actually seem to be doing a really, really good job. So uh, I think that uh, the brush is probably the best blending tool uh, with these uh, with these matte graphite pencils. But like I said, I think uh, that they perform pretty well and that you'll have no problems blending whatsoever. Now let's try some erasing. I'm going to need my pencil eraser and a kneaded eraser. I normally use this Kohinoor pencil eraser and a Faber-Castell or a Kohinoor kneaded eraser. So let's see if I try to lift up a little bit it does lift up it's more or less the same. Now let's try this one this is more like a regular rubber eraser now check this out that's really clean that works pretty well And uh, this one also erases, uh, but I would say that the regular graphite pencil doesn't erase quite as well as the matte uh, graphite pencil. And I'm going to explain why, because with these hard ones, you won't see the difference. I think the difference here is because with these softer, uh, softer graphite pencils, regular graphite pencils, which are shiny, uh, they're obviously... 
Uh, graphite is a lubricant, so the surface tends to get lubricated and very smooth. So sometimes it can be a little bit difficult for the, the eraser to gain traction to, to do the, the erasing. And with this one, I think, with the matte graphite pencil, uh, I think it's a little bit easier to erase with this rubber eraser. With the kneaded eraser, I don't really notice the difference, but uh, but uh, when you apply a little bit more of that soft regular graphite pencil, uh, it will sometimes get difficult for the eraser to erase fine small marks because the tip of the the tip of the eraser will get lubricated and you will have to resharpen it or cut the tip. So I would say that in terms of erasing, I would say that these actually, the matte graphite pencils, they actually erase a little bit better than the regular graphite pencils. And when it comes to blending, they uh, blend, don't blend quite as well as the regular graphite pencils, but they, they are more or less the same. So I would say that these uh, matte graphite pencils. I think that you can do pretty much anything that you would do that you would be able to do with regular graphite pencils, except for the huge difference in the reflectiveness in the graphite shine. So those are my conclusions so far. Let me just get these uh, regular graphite pencils back here. So like I said, these uh, Faber Castell 9000, these are great graphite pencils, I work with them, they're awesome, but right now I'm more, more interested in these. And I wanted to say just a few words about erasing, uh, rather about sharpening rather. Um, they sharpen really well, no breakage, uh, no problems there, they're not scratchy at all, so really, really high quality pencils. Um, there's... Um, I, I really don't see many flaws with them. I would say that the only problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that they don't blend quite as well as regular graphite pencils, but they do, pre uh, do a pretty good job at blending. So let me get these back here in place. And now I'm done with these smaller tests, and I'm going to show you this slightly uh, larger demonstration because I want to do a full drawing for you just so that you could see how they perform on a, on a full drawing of an animal. So let's check that out. This is the drawing I'm going to be doing, this African elephant. I thought that this was a good choice of a subject because it's not super complex, but at the same time it's detailed enough and um, it's challenging enough so that I could put these new pencils to the test. There are, some, there are some nice uh, details and textures there, and there is also a nice contrast between the shadow side and the light side. And there are some darker bits where I can also test some of these uh, darkest grades of these new pencils. So let's have a look at the drawing process. I'm going to be using a limited range here. I'm just going to use four or five pencils most of the time. I'm going to start my sketch with a 2B pencil and uh, the paper I'm using is a Strathmore 400 series. The size of the paper is about 11 times 8 inches. For blending I'm going to be using the usual blending tools, mostly brushes, but some tutilians and q-tips as well. For erasing I'm going to use a Kohinoor pencil eraser and a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. So I wanted to do a drawing of an elephant. The composition is going to be simple with just the drawing, uh, with just the animal in the middle. There's not going to be any background. Uh, it's going to be like a vignette, I guess, uh, with just a little bit of shadow under the animal. And uh, I just want to say a few more words about the pencils before I before I start commenting on the drawing process. So. My impression of the pencils uh, uh, from, the, from the initial part of the video where I did those smaller tests was pretty much confirmed during the drawing process of this elephant. These pencils are really good and they can do pretty much everything that graphite pencils can do. So I think that 
uh, graphite pencils, uh, graphite pencil artists will uh, won't have a problem switching to these pencils if they want to try, if they if they want to try them out. Um, but uh, like I said, I will be talking about these things in greater detail uh, during the drawing process. Right now, as you can see, I'm working on the sketch. I'm drawing these large ears and trying to position uh, the the eyes and the tusks. One of the best things about this about this picture, about this drawing, is the contrast between the light side and the shadow side. But we're going to get to that once I start shading. And uh, those are the front legs. So like I said, I'm not going to do a background, I'm just going to focus on the elephant. And now I'm starting with the shading process here. Uh, I'm going to start with one of the darker pencils actually, because I want to draw uh, this uh, darker area here uh, in between the head and the ears. This is a part of the body which is kind of tucked in and facing away from the light source, so it's going to be a little bit darker. And uh, the pencils I'm going to be using for the most part are 2B, 6B, 10B and 14B. I did the eye here with a 14B because that's going to be one of the darkest bits. And I added just a few touches of, of that darkest pencil to these shadow areas on the side of the head, in between the head and the and the ear, and also in between the legs here. So I'm going to use the darkest pencils uh, sparingly because I want to uh, I want them to have a stronger effect, and I want to create a nice range of value. Now the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to define the contrast between the shadow side and the light side. The light source here is coming from above and from the right. That means that the left side of the body and the left ear is going to be considerably darker than the, than the right. This contrast is very important to capture because it is the contrast in value which will help us convey um, a volume and depth to the viewer. So. Uh, Doing a line drawing, doing a sketch, is important as well, but it is not as important as this stage where we're defining the contrast between the lighter and darker areas, because this is the part of the drawing where you can make the where you can make your drawing actually look realistic. And it's very important here to to establish these larger contrasts first. Uh, because uh, because that will make the work on the detail a bit easier later because if I start with the detail I will get, get caught up in all the details and textures and it may happen that I fail to capture the larger relationships which are far more important uh, for creating a realistic drawing. Here I did a little bit of blending uh, with a Q-tip and I did the shading of this larger shadow area with a 6B pencil. That's going to be my base value for the shadow side of the elephant. But naturally I'm going to be adding some details and some darker bits to it a bit later. Now I'm not going to establish all of the relationships between the lighter and darker areas uh, at the very beginning. I'm just going to do this segment here uh, on the left. Uh, normally, some artists uh, actually they tend to uh, shade all of the larger areas first because they want to establish all of these uh, relationships, these larger relationships first. I will go segment by segment because uh, I want to minimize smudging and I like to work from left to right and from top to bottom because I'm right handed. So I did this segment first and now I'm starting to create a bit more variation in value in that shadow area and I'm going to be adding some details there as well because these ears, these flappy 
uh, large ears they have a lot of wrinkles and folds in them and there are a lot of folds in between the ears and uh, the skull and the, and the head so I want to capture all of these details now sometimes uh, it can be a good idea to simplify the shadow side a little bit so that you can enhance the contrast between the light side and the shadow side and so that you can allow the viewer to focus on those larger relationships but I'm going to try not to overdo it with the details but I still want to capture some of them to make my drawing look uh, realistic and I want to uh, use the uh, the advantage of graphite pencils because they're really great at drawing details and textures that's one of the best thing about graphite pencils and I'm not really sure if the camera will capture all of these details but uh, that, that's one of the things about graphite pencil drawings they look uh, so much more realistic and detailed in real life because there are so many of these wonderful uh, textures and details and transitions in value that the camera doesn't often uh, capture. <clears throat> so as you can see uh, first I shaded the larger area and then I added some details. Here on the legs I, uh, I'm adding some of these wrinkles because the, the elephant skin is very rough and wrinkly looking so I want to capture these details and to do, that, to do that I have to work with darker pencils on top of the on top of the 6B that I already used for the shadow for the shadow side of the elephant so for the shadows uh, for the shadow area of the elephant I'm mostly going to be using a combination of a 6B and a 10B and I know that, that this is considerably darker than what you would normally do with regular graphite pencils but it's still uh, quite a bit lighter than uh, what you would expect with charcoal because charcoal is a lot darker even than these matte graphite pen pencils uh, still I don't think I went too dark too early because uh, I want to use my darkest dark sparingly and you will see that I will use the 14B which is my darkest pencil I will use it very sparingly I used it for some of the darker bits in between the legs and in between the, in, on the area in between the ear and the head uh, but um, those are just some of the smaller areas I want to uh, allow the other pencils to create that nice range of value and uh, then just by adding a few highlights here and there using a pencil eraser like I'm doing now and by adding a few touches of that darkest uh, pencil that I have uh, hopefully that will really uh, make the drawing pop out and increase that range of value and uh, make make these uh, darkest and lighter bits all the more effective because uh, you don't want to overdo it with them I'm uh, moving on to the bottom part of the leg here on the left. These are the front legs. Uh, the hind legs will not be really visible because they're hidden behind the front legs. I will just do a little bit of shading in between the legs. And I'm also defining the shadow area of the front leg, uh, staying consistent with the light source, making sure that the left side is darker and that the light side is lighter because my light source, like I said, is coming from the right. I could have flipped it and uh, uh, done it the other way around, but I thought that it would be more natural for me to do the shadow area first on the left and then do the lighter area later. Sometimes I do the opposite, but here I, th this was what I decided to do. There's also going to be uh, a bit of shadow on the feet uh, a bit of shadow coming from the uh, from the trunk from the elephant's trunk but um, you can't really understand all of these details at this stage because uh, once I finish the shading of the whole animal or of the animal's body uh, some of these things will start to make a lot more sense right now because I established the contrast between the light side and the shadow side I am putting in the work with these uh, details with these wrinkles with these folds around the knees and 
and the front legs. And I'm also trying to make sure that I have a nice clean edge between the tusks and the rest of the body because the tusks are a lot lighter and they're kind of sticking out. It's very, very important to have a nice clean edge so that the viewer can uh, uh, feel like that part of the body is protruding forward. So it's all about trying to create that three-dimensional appearance and using the value contrast, the range of value and of course edges to achieve that feeling of depth and volume. Um, now let me get back to talking about the pencils because I've already talked a little bit about the shading process. So um, uh, one of the things I, I mentioned in the introduction was that in these initial tests was that uh, they feel a little bit different than regular graphite pencils and that's true. Uh, they feel a little bit harder, they feel a little bit more like colored pencils. But the thing is that they can still be blended pretty well. Uh, I think that regular graphite pencils are just a little bit softer and they can be blended and moved around. The material can be moved around a little bit more easily. But these can be blended pretty well. And I, like I said, my impression so far is that you can do with them um, the, the, uh, the same things that you can do with regular graphite pencils. Here I'm moving on uh, with the shading of the tusk. And the interesting thing here is that obviously the left side of the tusk is going to be a bit darker because of the light source. But there's also a nice shadow here on this upper part of the tusk because uh, the body, the head rather, is casting a shadow on, onto this part of the tusk while the tip of the tusk is uh, protruding forward and is lighter because it's catching light from the light source. So these shadows uh, they are very important and it's very important uh, to use them to your advantage because they will really help you create a more three-dimensional looking subject uh, because uh, we can now feel like that uh, like the tip of the tusk is really is really uh, protruding forward and is closer a little bit closer to the viewer and is really in front of the rest of the body and naturally I'm shading around it to uh, so that I can increase that contrast and so that this uh, uh, lighter area the lighter part of that tusk would really stand out against the background and I'm making sure that my edges are clean and that I have a nice sudden transition so that we can know uh, where the uh, the edge of that tusk is and where the background or the rest of the body begins. And moving on to defining some of the darker bits on the right side of the body, which is the light side, so I'm going to be uh, using some lighter values here. But now that I've established some of the larger shadows on the left, things are going to be easier, but there's also going to be some shadow areas on the lower side of the trunk or the lower part of the trunk and of course uh, the left side of the leg and of course this inner side uh, of the ear which is closer to the head. That's going to be a little bit darker. I'm going to do the other eye with a darker pencil as well um, and now there are there are some of these uh, wrinkles and folds in the middle of the head and where the uh, where the tusk uh, where the trunk is, but first I'm going to establish the contrast between the light side and the shadow side before I move on with all of these details because there are really lots of details in this middle part of the head and the trunk. So it's much much easier for me to shade the larger areas first, and I'm I'm using a two B pencil for shading the light side of the body. I use the six B for the shadow side. And I'm just going over the light side lightly with a 2B pencil just so that it, it too has a bit of value and stands out against the background obviously. I can't make it too light but I still have to make it lighter than the, uh, than the shadow side. I think there is a nice contrast between the shadow side and the light side now and soon 
I'm going to be moving on to defining some of the details and I'm going to be working on, on all of those wonderful textures and wrinkles and folds in the skin. I, I, I did just a little bit of shading with an HP pencil on the background because I wanted the tusk on the right to stand out against the background. It's going to be very light, it's going to be completely white. And uh, I wanted to stand out against the background, which is why I had to add just a little bit of value to the background. I had to make it a bit darker. Otherwise, uh, the, the tusk wouldn't stand out. You can't really uh, explain the shape without contrast in value. So I'm going to clean up the edge, but uh, first I, need to, I needed to create a bit, of, uh, a bit of contrast in value. And I did a bit of shading on the other side as well. And now that I have, uh, now that I have all of the larger uh, relationships in place, I can move on with the details. I can start adding some darker wrinkles within the shadow area. And I can start defining some of the details a little bit better. Like for example, these wrinkles around the eyes in between the uh, this uh, transition between the nose and the head, the rest of the head, and on the top of the head, we'll, we'll also have some some of these wrinkles. There are a couple of these. Um, how should I put this? Indentations in the temple area. Huge shadows there. Large shapes, and the the eye socket area is kind of bulging out. Now this part of the ear here is a little bit darker because it's facing away from the light source and the, the, uh, the lower part of the ear in general is a little bit darker than the upper part because the upper part is facing towards the light source. So you can see even on the left uh, I uh, had to make the middle and the lower part of the ear considerably darker than the top part even though I shaded the whole uh, d uh, shadow side with a 6B which is already fairly dark, but I had to make some of the areas a little bit darker. And now I'm drawing some of these uh, wrinkles in the, in the ear. These ears are kind of large and flapping around, and there are, there are some muscles and veins there as well, and some folds in the skin. So I want to make them look more three-dimensional. And this area here, closer to the head, uh, is kind of tucked in a little bit and uh, there's a little bit more shadow there, but it still can't be quite as dark as the same area on the left because the, the whole left side needs to be a little bit darker uh, than the light side. Now I'm going to go into defining some of these uh, folds here in the middle part of the head and this transition between the head and the nose area, the trunk area. And there's going to be lots and lots of these uh, folds here because the, the elephant's trunk is a huge part of the body which uh, I imagine has a ton of muscles in, in, in it. Uh, lots of smaller muscles which control the movement of the, of the elephant's trunk because elephants they can do some incredible things with their trunks. So I can imagine that there are lots of muscles controlling the movement and because of uh, all of those muscles, because of the, uh, all of the ways in which uh, that part of the body is bending and twisting, there's going to be a lot of folds and wrinkles in the skin. So uh, you can see that I'm drawing these horizontal lines, these horizontal ring-like shapes. Uh, and uh, in addition to those, there are also some vertical folds as well and while I'm doing all of these I'm staying consistent with the light source making sure that every part of that surface which is facing towards the light source is lighter and every part of that surface which is facing away from the light source is in the shadow is darker but all of this would be way more difficult if I hadn't established those large relationships between the shadow areas and lighter areas first and now I'm moving in with a pencil eraser, that Kohinoor pencil eraser, which I mentioned. And I'm actually pulling some highlights, trying to make those wrinkles and folds look even more three-dimensional. 
because uh, I'm allowing them to pop out by increasing the range of value. So I have those dark areas, shadow areas, and then I just do a bit of erasing, taking away a bit of value, and that makes the uh, those uh, those areas look more three-dimensional because it increases the range of value, it increases the contrast between the uh, shadow bits and the lighter bits. Um, I'm uh, doing the same thing on the ear here and uh, like I said trying to make everything look a little bit more three-dimensional but I also have to make sure that the edges are clean especially the, the outer edge of the elephant's head and the ears. Um, one of the things that I also like to do in addition to uh, defining all of these smaller shapes I sometimes like to just drag my pencil over the over the surface of the paper to create some random texture and some random detail to create that illusion of detail because like I said the elephant skin is really rough looking and there are lots of these unpredictable little details that you can't really be bothered to draw every single one but sometimes you can just let the pencil work for you you just grab a softer pencil you drag it over the paper a little bit and you create some random uh, rough looking textures and uh, that kind of speeds up the drawing process and makes the drawing look a lot more complex and realistic without you having to put in too much work. Now I'm going to define the shadow side of this tusk on the right. So the light side is completely white and it stands out against the background which I shaded lightly with an HP pencil. But the shadow side obviously is going to be a bit darker. It's important for me for these tusks which are a lot lighter to stand out against both the, uh, the elephant's body and the background. Uh, now let me get back to talking about the pencils a little bit more because I was mostly commenting on the drawing process so far. Uh, I just want to say a few more words and compare them with some other types of pencils. I uh, don't want you to expect uh, things that you can't achieve with these pencils. These pencils are really good as like I said I think uh, that they are just like graphite pencils but they are better because obviously they don't have the graphite shine they're a lot darker but don't expect them to be as dark as charcoal pencils or carbon pencils so these are considerably darker and uh, you can't really compare them with charcoal and another thing is that charcoal also is a lot faster to work with graphite pencils are simply better for some types of drawings where you need a little bit more control and precision and detail but for other drawings where you need where you need to achieve larger darker areas very quickly charcoal will be a lot better I just want you to be aware of that I also wanted to compare these pencils with the Stadler's Mars Lumograph black um, uh, Mars Lumograph pencils because uh, they were used as an alternative by some graphite pencil artists who wanted to uh, avoid graphite shine. I think these are better in my opinion because with uh, Stadler pencils you have a sudden transition between the regular graphite pencils like for example 2B, 4B and then the 6B and 8B are pitch black. So that's a very sudden transition. With these pencils you have a really nice transition in value. You have a really nice range of value. All of the grades are a little bit darker than their uh, traditional graphite pencil equi equivalents. Uh, and uh, there is a nice transition from the lighter ones to the darker ones. So I think that um, I am not, I'm not saying that you can't create some nice looking artwork with uh, Stadler pencils. I just think that these are much more natural and easier to use and that the transition for a graphite pencil artist will be much more natural because uh, uh, they will have this uh, slow and gradual a transition from the lighter grades to the darker grades. Anyway, it's uh, time for me to wrap things up here. I'm, uh, I did a little bit of work on the background at the bottom. I, I added a bit of shadow to the left because it's, uh, the light source is coming from the right and the body is casting a shadow to, to the left. And I'm just putting down some finishing touches trying to define uh, some of these smaller wrinkles and folds and some of the smaller shadow areas uh, but I'm going to be wrapping things up pretty soon. 
so those were my impression of these pencils I just want to um, say a few final words if you are a graphite pencil artist and you have a problem with graphite shine these pencils are for you uh, you will like them I guarantee they can do anything that regular graphite pencils can do but they are considerably less reflective I did a lot of nice work with uh, Faber-Castell regular graphite pencils as well as the some other brands but I really think that these are the best graphite pencils out there uh, at the moment so I'm just putting I'm just putting down some finishing touches and while I'm doing that I want to remind you uh, to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you like this video and if you found the the review useful don't don't forget to give me a like and comment I also would like to hear your opinion of these pencils if you uh, had an opportunity to use them uh, by the way I'm just using a pencil eraser to put down some finishing touches I'm putting down some uh, finishing highlights so that some of these lighter bits uh, would stand out uh, so I want to hear your opinion if you've already had the opportunity to use these pencils. I was actually quite impressed by them and uh, uh, like I said, you can't expect too much from them. They can't do all of the stuff that charcoal does. They do all of the stuff that graphite does, but they're a little bit darker. That's probably the best way I can, des I can describe them to you. For these types of drawings like this one and for portraits, I think they do a really good job. And by the way, uh, my next drawing with these pencils and my next video is going to be a larger portrait, a female portrait of an actress, which I'm going to do in these uh, pit graphite matte pencils. So if you want to check that out, uh, that's going to be my next video. Uh, I'm putting down some finishing touches. I've removed the tape and the, uh, the drawing is uh, going to be sprayed with a little bit of fixative eventually. Um, I'm almost done. I'm just uh, cleaning up some of the edges and uh, putting down uh, a little bit of uh, those, uh, uh, a few touches of that darkest 14B uh, graphite pencil that I have. Because like I said, I wanted to use it sparingly. And uh, now the drawing is pretty much done. I'm just going to put my signature in the lower right part of the drawing and that's it now uh, like I said don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already but if you want to see longer videos if you want to see more content if you want to see real-time footage if you want to see more if you want to hear more narration and more detailed explanations you should check out my patreon I have lots of additional content there. I have plenty of uh, full-length real-time videos where you can observe the drawing technique and you can draw along and you can hear uh, much longer, more detailed explanations. Uh, then, like I said, uh, you should check out my Patreon. Um, that would be it for this drawing. I hope you like my choice of a subject. I hope you found my review useful. And like I said, the next video is going to be a female portrait done with these pencils. Again, I want to thank you for watching this one. And I'm going to see you in that one. Yeah, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.